Hello you, welcome to Geekism, and welcome to Planet Zoo. Um, hello, been a while, sorry. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to go into it this video <laughs> as to where we've been for, I mean, let's be honest, a year on and off, really. It's been a year since sort of regular full content on the channel. Um, I'm not going to go into it now. We'll talk about it soon, I'm sure. Um, but this was what I was last doing before I uh, stepped away, and it was a meerkat habitat. And I've come back to the game. Um, had a bit of a uh, um, not real sort of huge amount of uh, creativity uh, come back, but definitely some, and definitely wanted to sort of ease back into some content. Um, and I thought, well, rather than just sort of scrapping this or starting something new, I'm going to sort of finish it and, and see if I can fix up where I was. So uh, it's going to be a meerkat exhibit, as you can see from these two big uh, meerkat overlords that are sat here. Um, and we're going to um, be finishing these off. The idea was to keep it pretty simple. This is in our sort of unnamed uh, sort of temperate zoo. The idea with this one was that it's going to be uh, a mix of old and new, so there's lots of old architecture and then newer sort of uh, additions that they've added on. Um, and that was definitely going to be the idea. Budget conscious, but not too... Um, not really tied into the budget so much, more of a just a we can play around with new animals and stuff. So we've got a few finished ones here, you can see all these already on the channel. These are for some uh, capuchin monkeys. Um, what else have we got finished? The Aardvark was one of the first ones we did. Uh, so again, sort of this was a, sort of the idea here was that it was a brutalist kind of build, very similar to Dudley Zoo in the UK. And they've tried their hardest to sort of uh, fancy it up a little bit, but a lot of this older build is, is sort of entrenched in... Uh, history and what have you. Uh, over here we have some red pandas um, and then here we were doing like an ungulate walk so we've got some bongos, some acarpies and we've got a space for some third ones. We were doing these on live streams. Would like to look get uh, getting back to live streams as well which might be fun um, and then a few other sort of unfinished projects that never actually made it to air um, this was going to be the Australia pack uh, area and the scale got a little bit away from me here if I'm completely honest with you and I think this is probably going to get ripped out although we do quite enjoy these uh, viewing platforms may well repurpose those um, but yeah definitely as I start to get back into the game one thing I notice uh, I'm struggling with a lot is scale um, it's uh, the game, just stuff in the game is big, and if you really want to sort of be conscious of scale, you have to really think about how you use the pieces. Um, this is all stuff you've heard before, right? So, um, so here you go. It's going to be meerkats. We basically need to finish the interior of the pen itself, and then this is going to become the uh, indoor building uh, for them. And, uh, and yeah, so we'll move to a time lapse and see how it goes. So something that I really still want to make sure I'm getting with these builds is the, the very sort of utilitarian uh, backstage of zoos. Um, they're, you know, modern zoos now are really trying to create real sort of amazing natural spaces for their animals. Um, which is which is awesome, but this isn't. This is a this is a zoo in flux, and again, this is something we spoke about before on the channels that all zoos are always in a state of flux, and uh, most sort of public facing entertainment areas are right. Like theme parks are never done, uh, zoos are never done, and that's something I really want to make sure that I, I get across here. So um, you know, so the the front facing stuff, the newer exhibits are going to be sort of much more sort of natural focused, but there's still going to be that sort of element of the wipe clean, hose downable concrete and um, and and things like that tile uh, that you that you get in a lot of uh, sort of zoo backstages. Um, I'm not saying that it's good. It, it's not necessarily what they should look like, and I do think that a lot of the uh, natural elements of uh, habitats are, are are better overall. But having spoken to to some sort of zookeepers whilst playing this game, they um, they they. A lot of the natural elements um, that are put into these habitats is is very often done for the the guests sort of view of the of the habitat as opposed to what the animals actually need. Um, you know, it, it, for it to look natural as far as we're concerned is is as important as it actually being a safe and uh, usable space for the animals. So um, I, again, I'm I'm not a, a, an expert on any of this. I have done a bit of research, but you know, it's it, it's not much further than reading Wikipedia and, and Zoo Chat or whatever else. Indeed. Indeed. Sorry, my puppy's 
scratching and scratching. I hope, I hope that didn't come up on the uh, on the microphone. I say puppy. She's two now. Like she still acts like a puppy, but she does not look like a puppy anymore. She's a big old doggo, aren't you? Hey, eh? yeah, good girl. Um, yeah, so here we go, building this out, like I say, mostly sort of plaster. Um, I, I, I use the plaster in the game because the concrete is quite thick, um, but I imagine this would be a, a concrete build if this was to be built in real life. Um, and I'm trying to sort of figure out how to do the, the tier down there from the slightly higher ground that we've got behind it. Um, I'll be honest with you, a lot of this ends up changing later in the video. Um, one of the big mistakes I made here, and it's a silly mistake that I should know better by now, is that I didn't place the animals in early in the build, and I am building a meerkat habitat, and they are much, much smaller. Uh, I mean, I know what size a meerkat is. I've seen meerkats. Like, <laughs> I've been to zoos where meerkats are, um, and they're, but it's just, like I say, the game scale can get away from you a little bit if you're not careful, uh, and I've ended up building this thing, the whole thing, much, much bigger than it needs to be. Um, I don't particularly mind it being bigger as in the actual uh, sort of floor plan. Um, that's fine by me. I, I, I'm happy to say, like, within the lore of this um, this world that this zoo has just put a lot of money and effort into their meerkats. They have a great meerkat conservation program. Uh, you know, I'm more than happy for them just to, to have devoted a large space to the animal. That's not a problem at all. Um, but the problem is the depth of the uh, of the pit that we're using here, which again, something we spoke about on the channel. Uh, pits are quite an older method of uh, containing animals. They're not used so much anymore um, because it's, it can cause a lot of sort of stress for the animal to be looked down upon by uh, by humans all day long uh, so now we go for a much more uh, sort of enclosed space that has uh, specific viewing points that guests can join rather than this big open almost sort of gladiatorial space um, but again this is a, an older zoo a zoo that's working within the confinements of the space that it has and the uh, limitations that it has um, so I'm happy to do a, a pit build here but yeah if I was building like a fully modern super uh, crazy new zoo um, then I very much doubt that I would use a, a pit metal like this um, but saying that, uh, yeah, it's just too deep. Uh, the animals get lost in there, it, um, as in sort of visually, they don't actually get lost. Uh, they, the animals sort of visually get lost in there. They look like little dark spots running around a lot of the time. Um, so once I've finished all of the foliage, uh, which is pretty light, to be honest, these, these are very sort of sand dwelling creatures they like sort of plains and, and sands so uh, some light grasses and a little bit of uh, sort of colorful foliage is, is pretty much it really they, they they keep it pretty light here and some climbing structures um if the game doesn't seem in the time i've been away from it doesn't seem to have really addressed the the issues with climbing structures in a, in as much as the animals very rarely use them uh, unless they have to so if you actually build an enclosure where they have to use the um the climbing structures to get to food or to get from one end of the enclosure to the other um they 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 will uh, but otherwise they they don't really seem to use them much at all and to be fair meerkats may not use them full stop um, but all of them in the game but all of the meerkat enclosures that i googled and looked at for inspiration for this build uh, all had some light climbing um sort of spaces so i wanted to get that in and also it's just a good way of breaking up that huge sort of swathe of, of sand and uh, and dirt so again, a little bit of light foliage here, um, and then we start throwing some meerkats in, and then as soon as they arrive, I suddenly realise that they look like uh, it looks like a flea circus. To be honest, they look like tiny little fleas running around. Um, I don't know what I'm doing at this point, having a bit of a mill about. Oh, I just realised that the exhibits weren't named, so I ran quickly ran around and named all the exhibits to the animal they were. I don't think it matters too much. It's mostly on the guest view. It just it's nicer to say, oh, copy habitat looks great, and not. Uh, you know, Habitat 6 looks great. Uh, so here you go. So basically you'll see that I've moved all of the, the ground right up. And rather than completely go back and redo the exterior of the habitat, I'm just kind of making it work. So here, what was sort of like a, a large glass viewing area uh, becomes a viewing area of a bit of a burrow. Um, again, I don't actually think I've seen any meerkats head down there, but they can get down there and it's more of an implied um, exhibit than a... Than a uh, and a real one struggling with the terrain here realize that there's still some uh it was like a water feature or something was stopping us to do that so we still need to have that relatively deep tunnel under the path there for the keepers uh that's the only reason just so keepers can get across there 
<clears throat> would really love a second door for keepers. Uh, some a lot of the uh, a lot of the exhibits I want to do have like climbing structures across a lake or something like that. Um, it'd be really great to have multiple entrances for keepers so, so that we could we could do that and not have to worry about them always being able to get to every point of the exhibit just from one entrance point. Um, but uh, but you know these these small things really that we can work around. It's not really that crazy. Um, so here redoing this because obviously the the ground raising up in the whole habitat means that the ground raises up here, which is a bit of a win personally because I wasn't really a fan of that uh, sort of steps down into the space thing that I was doing as as really a workaround for the height differentiation. Uh, I'm much happier with this sort of just being a more open space. Um, the only thing that these places could probably do with is they it is a bit of an airlock system, you know, the idea that uh, you can enter one door, make sure it's safe before entering another. It's something I haven't done here. I, I should really be thinking about that kind of thing, but um, as far as the interior buildings go in this zoo, I'm kind of happy with them just, you know, being empty boxes really, because once they're built, you're never really looking into them. So it's more just a space that the uh, animals can move away from the guests. Um, here, lowering down a few of the other uh, features, the uh, the rock work and what have you. Um, and there you can see the uh, the interior of the new burrow viewing area. I put some bedding there and there to see if it works. Uh, we'll jump back in live now and we'll have a good look at the place. Okay, here we go. So you'll see the, uh, the ground coming up now makes it instantly look more suitable um again it is still a huge space for these animals i think as far as the game is concerned actually it's massive let's have a look terrain um oh it's about double so it's not it isn't crazy big actually although the game does uh, give them quite a large amount of space they need there to be honest with you um but even still yeah it's about double it's not as bad as i thought actually so they have this little uh, burrow that they can get to down here let's just hide the uh, the ui so we can have a better look at it um there we go so there's a little burrow down there they can get to and then they have this like i say climbing structure I haven't even looked to be honest as to whether or not this climbing structure is accessible for any of them it it, it really is more more of just a, a sort of set piece in the uh, in the middle of the space just to kind of break uh, the larger space up but they are safe they can't get out of anywhere um there are probably some issues here where they could get to little kids fingers here maybe now that it's not so much of a pit uh, this fencing here would be better as glass. Maybe we can just carry on this glass round. Yeah, I might, I might look at doing that in a live stream because otherwise uh, that is definitely kitty finger biting space. Uh, but they can't actually physically get out of the space, which is good. I love the fact that they make these little tunnels. I don't know where they actually go when they enter these tunnels. Do they just sort of zone out? I don't, they're not actually running around underground, are they? Uh, but very neat. I did actually, I don't know if you caught it in the, um, in the time lapse. I did place down, there is like a burrow piece that you can place down now but I don't think the meerkats use it I think it's for some of the larger burrowing animals like aardvarks and stuff I have I think placed one in the aardvark pen uh, oh thought I had maybe haven't but I could maybe come back and, and add one into there uh, for old aardvarky uh, but there we go now we have yeah like I say a deeper area here just for the keeper to get through but then it raises back up again um, into the, uh, the interior area where they can all come at night Again, more of a more of an implied space this here as opposed to being anything that's really awesome to look at. Um, the only other major thing I did was lower the uh, again having another look at sort of real life meerkat exhibits. Um, this was a big pane glass window that came up to like sort of six feet tall. Uh, but actually, there is a lot more of uh, this sort of uh, lower uh, fenced area that you can really look over. Um, feels like it might be still sort of you know hand down reachable but i'll be honest with you if you're standing here leaning right over and putting your hand down you get bitten by a meerkat i feel like it's your own fault um they can't get up to this rock which is good uh so we haven't got to worry about this fencing too much but then otherwise yeah this sort of glass fencing that we placed around here with the uh the mesh on the end not sure where the uh, where the mesh came from don't remember which pack that was in but really enjoyed that um i think since i last played there's actually a few new packs i, I think there's a european pack recently I've been so out of the loop. I think there's a European pack recently. 
and I think there might be one more that I don't have as well. Um, but I'm very much uh, enjoying my time in here. There's also another building over there Ooh, that you can't see. I've already got the second video done, folks. This is this is real. This is I'm getting a bit of mojo back, which is good. Um, so I would love you to let me know in the comments. Uh, in the time I've been away, what has been your newest, uh, your favourite new animal um, for us to look at putting into this zoo, or, or even you know animal that you haven't maybe seen me do, or would you know think that you've seen a few people do and would like to see more options for it or something uh, let me know uh, again i always try and sort of base my builds on on real habitats to an extent although with this zoo i'm really not worrying myself too much uh, about the sort of real um really high level of realism because it, it, it can't, that was partly what burnt me out on the game a little bit to be honest with you so i'm definitely going for more of an implied realism and a uh uh you know, a, a stylized version of a realistic zoo, which I hope comes across with this build and, and the other ones we've done uh, here as well. Um, but there you go. Yeah, there's your there's your meerkats. I had lots of fun building them, uh, or finishing them off at least. Like I say, the actual first part of the build was done almost a year ago, which is kind of ridiculous to say. Uh, but there you go. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, you know, the drill, please give us a like. There's no point in disliking anymore. That's a new thing that's happened. The number's gone from dislikes, which is weird, but whatever. So please give us a like. Um, if you new here this might have seemed like a bit of a weird video bear in mind that we used to play a lot of this game and lots of other games um, and I've been away for a little while but I'm hoping to be coming back and getting back up to regular daily content so uh, if it sounds like your kind of tea that I'm brewing make sure you've hit subscribe uh, and until the next one be good